Hey, hello everyone. Thanks for joining us for Access City Council. I'm your host, City of Las Vegas Communications Director David Riggleman. Coming up on this show, as our city continues to face the daily challenges from this pandemic, so many are coming forward with an outpouring of love and support to help those in need. Here to discuss these topics and much more is the councilman who represents Ward 5. You know who it is. It's Mr. Cedric Creer. Welcome back. Hello, Mr. Riggleman. We are social distancing here. <laughs> As you can yes. see, we're a little farther apart than normal, but hey, that's the way of the world right now. It right? is the way of the world, and, and I tell you, uh, we have to be safe. We, we have do. to take precautions, and uh, we have to make sure we follow the guidelines set by our uh, health officials mm -hmm. who are helping us get through this whole pandemic. So exactly. I am happy to be here in studio, but also happy to be six feet apart yeah, from you. Exactly, me. exactly. Yeah. Thanks for coming in. Lots to talk about, a lot going on in Ward 5, a lot going on in the community. You know Ward 5 like the back of your hand. If you're not exactly sure where Ward 5 is located, we'll have no fear, we're gonna show you. It's right in the heart of it all. It's right there in the area with the five on it appropriately for Ward 5. It really encompasses our downtown area, but then meanders all the way out into the Northwest. So it's, it's a very diverse ward. And if you live in that area or work in that area, then you are in the city limits of the city of Las Vegas and you are represented by Councilman Cedric Creer if you're a resident there. So Councilman, um, it's just been phenomenal. All the things that have been going on to deal with this pandemic and, and one of our most vulnerable populations obviously is our homeless population. Mm -hmm. And uh, you posted this on Facebook. You said our team is doing amazing work and you're referring to the ISO Q, which we uh, call it's it's the isolation quarantine unit. It's on the parking lot there at uh, the Cashman Field, the Cashman Center on that west side of the building. And this is a facility for the homeless. It's a place to, for the homeless to quarantine or already be treated if they test positive for uh, COVID-19. You know, uh, there is a rationale that the homeless population, we have about 6,000 street homeless uh, congregating. It's tough to get them to isolate like, mm -hmm. like we can. Uh, many of them do not have the ability to isolate, and so we were getting inundated with uh, our courtyard. Uh, and then we had yeah. a we had a circumstance where Catholic Charities closed down for a little bit, and we reacted to that. Um, and so we had to find a way to take a population that doesn't have the ability to isolate themselves and created a facility down in Cash and Field. Mm -hmm. And I have to give the credit to all of our community services team and our team over at our courtyard for being so reactive uh, to this, our city manager, and uh, putting the resource together. This is a partnership with the county as well, and have to thank uh, the county commissioners, Merlin Kirkpatrick and that team for mm -hmm. moving so quickly to get this facility up. It's able to house about 500 facility yeah. persons a night, yeah. uh, whether you're symptomatic or if you, you can get tested, and then if you also are, are positive, there's an isolation facility for you, hence isolation quarantine mm -hmm. facility. Right, right. And uh, it's been going great, it's vitally needed, I believe, and I haven't heard anything to combat this. It is the only facility of its kind in the country. Mm -hmm. And it is amazing with the volunteers that have happened, with the, with the physicians, the medical care facilities, um, as well as our team that is down there working day to day on the front line. Yeah. Just fantastic. It's been an incredible effort. Uh, again, our homeless population is, is uh, into the thousands here. And the ISOQ, again, people, uh, when they were congregating uh, at the homeless courtyard or at the other uh, facilities uh, that the service providers have, that social distancing was a difficult uh, situation there. Uh, this facility is an opportunity, Councilman, as you said, for people who have been exposed to the virus to, to quarantine, people who are symptomatic to quarantine, and as you mentioned, people who also have tested positive, a mm -hmm. place for them to be in isolation and yep. be treated uh, until they uh, recover. Sometimes uh, we have to send them to a, a hospital yes. if their condition uh, worsens, uh, but uh, most of the time the patients are able to recover at the facility. Yep. So. And then our outreach teams are going out into these uh, areas to try to get people to come in to get tested so that we all know uh, if they right. are positive or not, right. uh, we, we talked about contact tracing, understand if they are positive, where were they, where they came from, and that's going to help the entire community get back to normal. Get back yeah. to normal. Yeah. Yeah, for so sure. that's vitally important that, yeah. we, that we do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Councilman, you mentioned this too, the, the help in, from the community to, uh, for the ISOQ and just really uh, in general has been amazing. I want to show you all these truckloads of water were delivered to the ISOQ. The weather's warmed up. It got warm very quickly. One of the first things that people are always going to grab is, is water and, and look at all that. Thousands of bottles of water uh, donated to uh, help 
that facility operate. Yeah, you know, I was talking to our community services director and, and she was saying that there is a need for water. People are contacting me and saying, what what is needed, right? We need PPE, we need masks, but mm -hmm. you would think something as simple as water uh, we would be we would have, but there is a shortage of water in terms of uh, getting them out to large facilities mm -hmm. like this, and so we needed help. And so I reached out to a very good friend of mine, uh, and I said, "Hey, uh, there's a need," and he said, "I'm here to to help." I contacted Shatakis and thank you to them for also providing some masks as well as the water. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they had four truckloads of water coming in and I said, I'll take all four truckloads of that water. And that donor who wants to be uh, named anonymous uh, reached out, covered the cost of that water oh, and donated awesome. it to the ISOQ facility. And so we have got a, uh, we're well prepared. Yeah. And it's fantastic. I saw the other day, though, that there's a need for Share Village mm -hmm. uh, with Arnold Stalk and his facility needed some water and some other council persons helped yep. and stepped in with that as well. And so once again, it's a community uh, and it's not just the elected. It's it's the it's the residents, the people that live here and work here that are stepping up to help our community. Yep. So thank you to everyone for that. Yeah, it's been it's been amazing. And mm -hmm. uh, of course, we're all trying to get through. Uh, this whole pandemic and, and really kind of taking it. I tell my family we're just going to take it one day at a time to get through yeah, all of this. Yeah. And and, you know what though? If you if you look at it, here we are, and uh, we're already in May. Yeah. Yeah. We started out February, March with this, mm -hmm. but here we are in May. So we're making it through. Uh, it's the new normal. Yeah. And it'll continue to be the new normal, uh, probably for a long time. But we do need to get uh, active and get engaged and get open responsibly. And I think everyone's on the same page yeah, with that. I think so too, I think mm -hmm. so too. And of course, we're uh, trying to bolster each other through all this as well. Uh, I, I love this, uh, Black Entertainment Television, BET, uh, Channel 27 on Cox Cable, uh, ran this promo and uh, excited to see someone very familiar uh, to <laughs> the city uh, is in this. And I don't know if you had seen this, I posted this on social, see if you can identify uh, the young man that will be coming up very shortly here, right? Yeah, about who, who there. Is that guy? Who is that guy? <laughs> and uh, if you guess Councilman Career, you are absolutely right. <laughs> so, it, how did you end up in a in a promo for Black Entertainment yeah, Television? I have no idea. Uh, once again, it goes back to the fact that they were they were looking obviously for persons who were going out on the front lines doing. Uh, work to combat the COVID-19. Uh, we had our isolation quarantine facility. Yeah, that's, that that's was from a press were. conference that's, yeah. there. Mm -hmm. And uh, my, I have a niece that is an actress on the show Sisters mm -hmm. on BET. My wife was watching the, the show and all of a sudden she saw me and she says, "It was was that Cedric? <laughs> she rewound it and lo and behold, it was me. She calls me, she says, Cedric, come here and take a look at this. And, I, and she, she didn't tell me I was on it either. And she just said, watch this. And I watch it and I go, hey, I think that's me. <laughs> you know, uh, see, a, a wife would definitely be able to identify you even with a mask and all. Yes, she no doubt about it. Nailed it on the yeah, first pass. Yeah, so. yeah, but, yeah. you know, I, I got a kick out of it, too, because you sent me that. And I said, see if you can uh, find some, see if you recognize anyone in here. <laughs> and uh, I got it on the first pass, too. Did you? So, and I, of course, I posted it all over Twitter. And, yeah. And a lot of people got a kick out of it. I so. never would have thought they would have picked <laughs> that picture out of all the people around the country that they utilize. Yeah. Um, but it shows you once again about the community effort yep. and in small communities large communities yep. uh, people from all around this country all around the world are really stepping up to try to come together to help curve this um, pandemic and yeah, but BET, thank you BET yeah they did a beautiful job yeah it. they yeah. did it's a very it's a very very good spot all right councilman uh, you posted this on Facebook you said uh, this really broke my heart when I saw this uh, our family is devastated by the loss of Kiba's Aunt Gwen due to the COVID-19 virus in New Orleans. Of course, Kiba is Councilman Creer's wife and uh, just so sad to hear this. You know, uh, Aunt Gwen was a really a, a wonderful person. Um, she went to church just about every day, a devout Catholic, and took in people in her home. Uh, she adopted three, three kids. Uh, she was a person that if, if, if you were in need, she, would step she was there to help yeah. you. She didn't care who you were, where you came from, what your socioeconomic background was or not. She helped people and she believed in people and she believed in the community. And she was just a really wonderful person. She was sick. Uh, she went into the hospital. Uh, she went on a respirator and um, 
she I'm passed. So sorry. I'm yeah, so sorry. yeah. You know, and also the tough part, we just had her memorial service this week. You know, it, it was done via Zoom, mm -hmm. and uh, they had a some so a couple people there. Her, her kids were there, and they, you know, filmed it uh, back to us, and so we were watching it on uh, on our computer, mm -hmm. and it, it just makes it tough nowadays. Yeah, sure. Uh, you know, and I'm sure a lot of other families around the country, well, around the world, are going to the exact same thing. Well, and that's the thing. You know, we hear all the statistics and the numbers and the numbers and the numbers, but boy, when it happens yeah. to someone in your family, it becomes yeah. very real. You're 100% right. It's always uh, sight unseen. Mm -hmm. If it's not happening to you, then it's happening to somebody else. Oh, okay, you just live your life. But mm -hmm. when it hits home to yeah. you, someone you know, that you love, that you have, you know, I've, I've been married for 25 years. I've been... Uh, with my wife for 34 years, and I've known her for 34 years. Mm -hmm. And so someone that I've spent time in our home, someone that I know, uh, and it's it's just devastating. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Yeah, I'm so sorry. yeah, yeah, it's, it's tough, it's tough. And it uh, sounds like she was uh, a wonderful person. She too, really so. was, yeah, she was, and um, she, was, she hadn't been sick. So it just shows you, though, yeah. this is that real. This, thing this, is, is, real. this yeah. is real, right? And it could happen to anybody. Yeah. It's not just, you know, those that are out, you know, being reckless. It could happen to everybody. She yeah. was, she was, she wasn't a person that uh, was going bucking the system. Yeah, she was doing what she needed to do, and where she and she contracted it somewhere along the way. Well, wishing her family peace. Thank you very much. Counseling. So uh, proud of the community. So much was going on. We talked about this. All the donations that just continued on. Uh, Ward Five had a huge food distribution. This was a, a chefs for Vegas. Uh, uh, some of our elected officials, you councilmen, your your team. Uh, this was an incredible thing. I, I think we're 300 yeah. me, uh, meals prepared yep. and, and delivered and given out. Wow. Yep. Chefs for Vegas uh, and a lot of nonprofits and sponsors. I have to give a special thank you to Sydney Sales from the Sales Group uh, for organizing, working with the sponsors and working with uh, community leaders to make this happen. Um, once again, it shows you the resiliency of our community. Um, uh, Cassandra, who runs our senior center at Doolittle, was out there. Uh, working to hand out uh, meals. It was a safe environment where you open up your trunk, they put the bags in and you went on. And, and I tell you, uh, it just shows you our community once again steps yeah. up. No one, no one told them to do this. It they wasn't like it. the wow. governor, the mayor, myself said, hey, you need to do this. This is something that they put together and informed me that they were doing it. Wow. And they didn't ask for anything. They didn't look for anything. They just said, we're going to do it. We want to let you know. We'd appreciate it if you would you know, give us some support it's, and let people know about it. So important because so many people are not working right now yeah. and they don't have a paycheck coming in and they're very concerned about how they're going to make ends meet. And so when somebody can step up and, and give you some, some meals, it's a, it's, it's a big deal. Yeah, you know, yeah. we've had so many people who have said, uh, I never thought I would be in a situation. You know, years ago, I was chairman of the board for the American Red Cross here and after Hurricane Katrina, I went back to New Orleans and set up food kitchens and um, in, in, in different parts of the city. And you would see people who were driving up. Uh, some of them were in Mercedes, they were in Toyotas, they were in Porsches, and they never thought they would find themselves in these situations. No, no. And here they are at a food kitchen looking to get assistance from the American Red Cross. Yeah. And so um, it doesn't discriminate. It affects everybody in many different ways. And just because you think that uh, someone may not be going through tough circumstances right now, you shouldn't. Everybody is going through something. Yeah. I don't care who you are or what's happening. Everybody has a burden that they are shouldering. I, I couldn't agree more, Councilman. I, and I think that uh, we're all trying to work through this uh, mm -hmm. in our own way, but we're, we're all carrying some. some yeah, load. I yeah. Agree. So, you know, be a little more kinder, a little more mm -hmm. gentler yep. to good, good words to people. Mm -hmm. um, and because you never know what someone's going through. And I think that uh, don't don't judge of what you see. Everybody in this community is shouldering some type of burden yeah. through this. Yeah, so true, so mm -hmm. true. Councilman, again, we've got so many great people in the community that are helping out. Uh, Mother Hubbard's uh, pantry, uh, Mother Hubbard's covered uh, this pantry. This is file footage, obviously. This has uh, been shot a few years ago, but you get a look inside of what they do, and it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a food pantry for people in need. And believe me, uh, Mother Hubbard's right now is very, very busy. A um, lot, lot of demand, a lot of need right now, and they are stepping up over there. They yeah. are, and, and they've stepped up uh, before, and they're just continuing to live out there mission 
Um, they are over at the Deerfield Senior Center out of Lorenzi. And, you know, once again, we thank them for, for taking the lead to do things. Once again, it wasn't like someone said, you need to go do this. They just did it because it's part of what they do. And I really applaud them for, for doing it. I'm sure they'll have more um, um, times to dispense food yeah. as well. And uh, we'll let you know when the next one is so that people can be engaged in it. You know, it's interesting when you see that uh, Mother Hubbard uh, and food pantries like that were already doing a lot mm -hmm. of work. And, and now the demand, the need is so much greater. It is. And so you just take your, your hat off to those folks if they can keep delivering food mm -hmm. through all of this uh, when they already were very busy prior to. Yeah. And, uh, you know, agencies like Three Square are providing of meals to a yeah. lot of different entities around this entire city. And if someone has an opportunity to give, if you do have a little extra, I urge you to reach out to some of those nonprofit organizations yeah. in order to uh, provide them with assistance. Three Square would be one, Catholic Charities, our homeless uh, corridor for the city of Las Vegas. Uh, everybody needs help right now. And so I urge you, if you do have the ability to provide assistance in some way, shape or form, your time, your talent, or your treasure, then please reach out to some of those nonprofit organizations and help them out. Kelsman. And then I uh, want to tell everybody too along those lines we have an event coming up uh, this coming Saturday. I know some of you will see it after the fact. This show begins airing on a Thursday so hopefully you're going to see it in advance of the event but on Saturday May 9th uh, from noon to 1.30 over at the Doolittle Senior Center there's going to be another uh, distribution of meals that's going to take place. The Quiet Storm Foundation City of Las Vegas co-sponsoring this. Uh, package food distribution uh, for the community uh, and again free entree uh, simply pure is is one of the partners on this so uh, again great opportunity especially if you're having a little trouble making your ends meet to getting through mm -hmm. um, if you're not working right now which so many people are not uh, there's another opportunity for some they are and you know thank you to the choir Storm foundation cj watson uh, kathy watson uh, simply pure stacy dugan is a chef and I've known her and her family for, for decades. And uh, they're going to provide food to our community once again over Doolittle, yep. which is over in J Street, J and yep. Lake yep. Mead. Um, uh, if, you, if you need assistance, come out. Uh, they aren't uh, screening people and saying, you get it, you yeah. don't. Yeah. If you come out, if you need assistance, you're going to get provided exactly assistance. Right. So thank you to them for that. We look forward to it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks so much. And uh, then, Councilman, you posted this on Facebook. You said, today, the city of Las Vegas is going blue to show our support for all those on the front lines battling this pandemic. And there you are wearing your blue shirt, your blue hat. Uh, we turned City Hall, the lights on City Hall, uh, blue uh, in honor of those folks as well, because, uh, boy, um, there are some folks that can't take a break through all yeah, of this, right? And, there are. And thank God that they're, they're working for us. Uh, health professionals, law enforcement, first responders, mm -hmm. uh, uh, even the folks working at the grocery stores and the pharmacies, uh, keeping things rolling. I so. agree, and uh, it was just nice to take a moment to to really recognize and thank them, uh, because we do need them and we appreciate them. Like you said, uh, they didn't have an opportunity to to take a break from all this, and they they. They have to provide basic services to our community. They are essential workers. And, and it's everybody from the bus drivers to the Uber driver to our firefighters, our police, yeah. uh, workers at at uh, supermarkets, mm -hmm. pharmacies, the list goes on and on. But even thank right you. Here, even right here at City Hall. Even too. right here yeah, at City yeah, Hall, yeah, no yeah, doubt about sure. it. I was gonna say, you know, we have a lot of people that have not skipped a beat during this whole thing. And, and also especially have people out on the front lines who are working in a homeless corridor, or isolation queue facility. You know, there are people that are working 12, 15 hour days here at the city of Las Vegas. And so uh, we, we thank them and they have stepped up to the call once again. Yeah, that's yeah, it's greatly appreciated. Um, and I think to just the fact that um, people know that you're you're you're, get, you're, you're getting their um, support, you know, mm -hmm. they're 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 saying thank you. I think it helps keep those folks going. I know in New York uh, every night uh, they'll they'll, um, you know, applaud and cheer yeah. for the hospital workers. And the workers are talking about how they can hear that and how it just helps sustain them and keep them going a yep, little bit. Yep, so. yep. You know, thank you, thank you. We don't say thank you enough in our, in our society. Uh, and this is a time where we are definitely saying thank you. And there's nothing more that 
greater thing that I can say to you besides I appreciate you and I thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Councilman, I, I couldn't agree anymore. And, uh, you know, in Las Vegas, uh, instead of having people stand and, and yell to the hospital workers, uh, we got something a little bit cooler. We have the Thunderbirds, <laughs> right? And so uh, you posted uh, this on Facebook. You said, uh, thank you, Thunderbirds, based out of Nellis Air Force Base, for the amazing flyover to recognize the frontline healthcare workers. And there they go. And uh, they went right over my house too. It was pretty mm -hmm. spectacular. And uh, you know what a great way to let those uh, at, at the hospitals know that uh, they, they had their back. They flew over all the area hospitals. Yeah. So. You, you know, Nellis Air Force Base is a uh, pretty amazing facility. We take it for granted because it's right there, but it houses some of the most uh, amazing uh, uh, Thunderbirds. We've got the B-2 bomber out that way and it's it's, it's a really major Air Force yeah, base. Yeah. Uh, and I've grown up here, so I've seen it and I've heard it. And, and, and growing up on the west side of town, you would hear these, yeah. these jets go by and you would think, what is that? It's how loud. When all the Thunderbirds went over my house, <laughs> it rumbled. Yeah, yeah for It didn't sure. just shake. It didn't just, you didn't hear it. It was like, like what was that? Yeah. And you were wondering, and if you weren't there to see it, then you, you would have thought that there was an earthquake yeah. because it is so powerful and mm -hmm. they're so high up, but God, my goodness, it's amazing how fast they were going. It's yeah. amazing how powerful they are. You could literally feel it on the ground. It was an exciting day. A lot of uh, my neighbors, uh, they were outside waiting for them to, mm -hmm. to fly over. And when they did, you could hear people cheering all around yeah. uh, in the houses yeah. uh, in the yeah. area. It's so, always special. Yeah. And then when we get back and open, I can't wait for the next air show. Uh, I did, I did Nellis, yeah. and, you know, Looking when you go to a sporting that. event, yeah. you, you, when they, when they do that flyover, if you're ever in a stadium and they do the flyover, it's, it's just, yeah, it's, it's just something. Yeah, yeah it, it really it, is. You want to go out and get a USA flag and just, <laughs> <laughs> right. yes. just run around the block and wave it or something. <laughs> For sure. It makes sure. you feel good. For sure. And Councilman, through it all too, uh, you know, kids are still trying to go to school as best they can through distance learning. And you helped out, uh, you and some of your fellow council members uh, for uh, Reading Week, uh, reading to kids from home. Uh, this was uh, Clark County School District Reads. It was the hashtag. Uh, that so many were using, and there you are reading a book. It looks like a seahorse there. That you're it is a seahorse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know that was my second time doing it, and it's just great. You know, when you think about it, I I like to read. I I uh, promote reading, and I think that it's important for kids to see that uh, there are people that are reading. Yeah. One. Uh, and it's nice that they can take a moment and look and just have someone read to them. It's always special when you're able to go to the classroom and read to yeah. students. Um, and, and, and not just during reading week of the Clark County School District, but all the time. And, yeah. and so the kids are just enamored when you're there reading to them, which is great. You feel like a rock star mm -hmm. because the kids are just so yeah, happy to yeah. see you. <laughs> and, uh, and, and so it's just great to see that. And you know that they turned that on and they saw it. And I think they, were, they would be great. And, you, and, and also to all the other people that have volunteered to read yeah. it to the to the kids. I think it's great. Helps keep them engaged. Tough to go to school the way kids are going to school right it now. Is. And, it is. Uh, to stay focused. And so you get somebody reading to them. It, it kind of helps keep that whole educational thought process no going. No. And it lets you know that we're thinking about yeah, you exactly, also. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. right, exactly. And the councilman, you posted this on Facebook. You said the Las Vegas City Council approved the plans for a health and wellness center at the corner of Main Street and Foremaster Lane. This is a big deal. Uh, this is right over in uh, the quarter of Hope, uh, mm -hmm. where so many of our homeless population uh, have services uh, provided to them, and so this will be another facility that will be able to uh, to keep people keep people healthy and safe. Uh, going to be really needed, especially as we uh, emerge from this pandemic. So you know, this facility is going to is right at the uh, courtyard, mm -hmm. our homeless courtyard, which is right on Four Master and Main mm -hmm. in Las Vegas Boulevard. Uh, the complete build out of the courtyard is absolutely amazing. And this uh, healthcare facility, this FQHC facility that's going to be there, is going to help service the homeless population that's there for, for medical facilities, but also the community that's there. So that's great. it is going to be a complete resource that is needed in that community. Um, and so uh, I applaud my colleagues for approving this and us moving forward with it because it's going to be transitional and transformational. Yeah. Yeah, good. Mm -hmm. Congratulations on that. Yeah. I know that was one thing that you had on your list. Got it yep. uh, checked off there. It's fantastic. And then, uh, Councilman, we want to get the word. One important thing we want to note before we close out the show, the census. Uh, census time is going on right now. We want to make sure that everybody in Nevada gets counted, every household, because all of our federal funding, our representation in Washington is all based on the census every 10 years. That's going on now. So if you haven't done so already, you can fill it out online. 
you can uh, fill out a paper survey mm -hmm. and send it in, or if you don't do either of those, then a census taker will come to your house and, yeah. and, 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 and do some counting too. You, you so. know, and they've, and they've extended it. Uh, thank you to the federal government for extending the census. This, the workers will go out uh, soon. Once the once it gets to all clear, yeah. um, and if you haven't filled out your census, go to census.nv.gov. Uh, I've done it. It literally takes about ten minutes. Same here, Councilman. It is piece of cake. Yep, it is very very simple. Uh, we do not report your immigration status. No. We don't report uh, uh, if you're if you are convicted or not. Just go and do it. It's vitally important. It's about twenty thousand dollars per person that is reported for the city for the state of Nevada, and it helps out with roads, health care, education. Everything. Yeah. Um, yeah. It 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 helps uh, create where our, our our voting districts are going mm -hmm. to be. So it's vitally important that we get the information, and so yeah. I urge you to get out. One thing of note is that Nevada, as a whole, is doing fantastic, though. Uh, even with the fact that the workers haven't gone out, we're at about a 56% response rate for the census as of as of as of today, as mm -hmm. of as of this week, which is great. Uh, and we're in the top you know, 25 percentile of all states in that's, the that's in great. the country for response for the census. So yeah. kudos to Nevada. There's a long way to go. Keep yeah. up the good work, but we are definitely uh, yeah. moving forward with it. Be sure to be counted. It's simple, and Councilman said uh, the information isn't going to get you in trouble in any way, shape, or yep. form. Yep. So, yep. Anyway, so please, so please, please help. fill it out. All right. Good work. Well, Councilman, we're about out of time here. Uh, we want to tell everybody out there, we always want to hear from you. So if you have something you'd like to share with Councilman Curry, you can find him on Facebook and Twitter. He's also pretty active on Instagram as well. You can also contact the Councilman just by picking up the phone. We still do that around here, 702-229-6405. Or you can send him an email. His address is ccreer at lasvegasnevada.gov. And he or one of his great staff will get back to you right away. And Councilman, uh, Super job. Great to have you, you back on the program. Yes. It's good to see you here. And we'll do it again in six more weeks. And hopefully things will be a lot more improved six it more will weeks be. down the road. It will be. Uh, we'll be much further along in the reopening of our community. And uh, hopefully our numbers will continue to flatten. Yep. Even though we're going to get more testing into the community, I believe, which will probably have more positives, uh, we will overall flatten this curve. And we're going to be uh, moving forward and getting this community back to where we yeah. need to be. Here, here. I can't wait for that mm. to happen. So, well, great job. Good to see you. Thank you. And I uh, want to tell you out there, uh, don't miss our next show beginning on May 14th with Ward 6 Councilwoman and Mayor Pro Tem Michelle Fiore. You can now catch all of our KCLV shows on Apple TV, Roku, and Amazon Fire. And don't forget, you can watch us live on the internet at KCLV.tv. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you next time around. Please stay safe.